like, what are we talking about here? Like, Nick, we've changed coordinators. Okay, we, we've seen that happen multiple times in right. Philadelphia. The buck stops with Nick Sirianni now. Like, you yeah. can't, there's no one else you can point the finger at in Philadelphia. Well, the Eagles are just finishing training camp, and Howie Roseman continues to do what Howie Roseman does, which is plug in the remaining holes on the roster. If you didn't see, yes. the Eagles just traded for Jahan Dotson, who should fit perfectly in the wide receiver three spot. Dotson is a familiar name, not only because he played against the Eagles, but also due to his local ties. The New Jersey native attended high school in Nazareth, Pennsylvania, which is 90 minutes north of Philly, and played college football for Penn State. And even outside of this trade, there is a lot going on with this team right now, and I'm going to get to it all. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. It only takes 5 seconds, plus you can always change your mind. We are on the road to 40k subscribers, and with your support, I believe we can get there super fast. Alright. So we are now just a little over two weeks away from opening kickoff, and we all just saw the tweet from Adam Schefter. Dotson is headed over to Philly, and the Eagles also got a fifth round pick with it as well, in exchange for a 2025 third round pick and two seventh round picks. I think we all expected the Eagles to make some sort of trade, but I don't think anyone really expected it to be Dotson. There were a lot of other names being thrown around in regards to Philly trade rumors. But yeah, Howie Roseman has just been pouncing this offseason, trying to make any area better that could be made better. Since 2016, Howie has made 17 trades after the start of training camp, and 10 of those have even come after August 20th. But anyways, let's take a deep dive on who Jahan Dotson is as a player. What's great about Dotson is his versatility. He can play both inside and outside receiver positions, which gives an offense flexibility. He's very skilled at tracking the ball in the air, making him a threat on deep passes, despite not being particularly tall. He also has experience as a punt returner from college, but I don't think the Eagles are going to utilize that. However, he does have some limitations. His smaller size for an NFL receiver can be a disadvantage against larger corners, his blocking in the run game isn't as strong due to his size, and there's also room for improvement in terms of consistency. Because he sometimes does have quieter games, but as the wide receiver 3, he's not going to be asked to do too much. Moving on, let's talk about Jalen Hurts a little more. I feel like I talk about him in every video I make about this team, but everything truly does lie on his shoulders, and apparently, he's been dazzling in training camp. I'm hearing that he went weeks without throwing an interception. Jalen has had an excellent camp, offensive coordinator Kellen Moore said this week. He's got great command of this offense, great utilization of tools when he wants to, and communication with the offensive line, with the receivers. I just think it's been an awesome process. For as much as Hurts has publicly yearned for continuity with the offensive coaching staff, something he hasn't ever really had, it just isn't realistic for most of the NFL, and definitely isn't realistic in his situation. He has already gone through Doug Peterson, Nick Sirianni, Shane Steichen, and Brian Johnson as his play callers. And if things go too poorly with Moore in 2024, he could be one and done too. But outside of that, I am just so excited for the receiving core the Eagles now have. I mean, a 1-2-3 punch of AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dotson is just nasty. And then Paris Campbell is sitting at number 4, looking to revitalize his career. The camaraderie, the vibes, it all just got amplified. This offense is going to be incredible, and there is really a lot of versatility on both sides of the ball. Another thing that is super important going back to Dotson is that he is a 2022 draft pick. And with the Eagles spending a ton of money on securing their top dogs, they didn't want to spend a lot on one guy that won't see as many targets. So even if this trade does not work out and Dotson is a flop, they have an easy way out. And the Eagles still have a lot of draft picks next year. I think the word that I would use for this trade is insurance. I feel like to this point, it's safe to say that Dotson is more reliable than a guy like Paris Campbell or even Johnny Wilson. And if AJ Brown or Smith do somehow go down with an injury or something like that, I feel more confident in Dotson stepping into a big role than any of those other guys down the depth chart. But moving on, let's talk about the running game and how the backs have performed in the first two preseason games. Week 1, it was Milton who got majority of the carries with 9, and he rushed for 39 yards on the ground, and Davis Price was right behind him with 34. As a unit, all of the running backs combined were near 150 yards for the game. And then in week 2 against the Patriots, Davis Price led the way with 28 yards, but the Eagles were under 100 for the game, something they are going to look to improve upon in the final matchup of the preseason. And we all know that pretty much the most important part of a running game is the offensive line. And talking about the line, Lane Johnson is undersized, but there are some massive possibilities with this unit. Tackle Jordan Mailata moved to the right side of the line, moving next to Lane. And to Johnson's left was right guard Becton. That's 1,053 pounds of offensive linemen lined up next to each other, all over 6'6". Six six. 
I just hope I don't get my feet stepped on. Johnson said of the formation with a laugh. You get all three of us on one side, you better have some answers. I don't think anyone can move on my Lada, and the size of Makai, they're exceptional movers. The Eagles have the potential to be one of the biggest offensive lines in the NFL with Becton at guard. Johnson is actually the fourth biggest offensive lineman in terms of weight, coming in behind Malata, Becton, and Landon Dickerson. Anyways, moving on, now let's break down this defense. I think there is more belief in the pass rush now than there was at the start of camp. Bryce Huff has had a better last two weeks, he started to get to the quarterback a little more even though he did go up against a banged up offensive line, and Jalen Carter has had a spectacular summer. There's a lot of buzz about the linebackers right now on different radio shows. People are saying both good and bad things. I think White and Dean are the best on the field duo right now, but there is still a lot to be known about the group as a whole. It's honestly pretty hard to judge some positions in training camp because of the physicality, but sometimes you can just tell when things are clicking. And if the defense can set Jalen Hurts up in good positions, that is how I think the Eagles can make another run to get back to the Super Bowl. And I got flamed for saying this in one of my previous videos, but I think this is a make or break season for Hurts. After this year is over, we will have an idea of if Hurts is the long term franchise quarterback for Philly, or if he's somebody that many people still doubt. This is what the media has to say. Distracted. 2 5. What's Hurts got to prove this season? Um, he got to prove that he's not just a one hit wonder, right? Yeah. The, 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 the year that everybody fell in love with him. He couldn't do no wrong, right? We was down, we needed to win, he find a way to win. We was down, we couldn't score, find a way to score. That's who Jalen Hurts was. We watched him get better and better and better. See, in Philadelphia, I told, I told the Shawnis earlier, everybody can't play there. A dude yeah. like Jalen Hurts got that thick skin, yeah. that he can play there, got that attitude. He ain't soft. He ain't no Ben Simmons. Here is a random bold prediction. Last year, the Eagles' touch push was a key topic of conversation, as short yarded situations became essentially automatic conversions. However, center Jason Kelsey retired during the offseason as we all know, and with him gone, the Eagles will learn the hard way that they can't convert without him while using that play. Also, I expect for Jalen to use his legs a lot less and get more yards through the air to protect his body. The Eagles start off the season against the Packers in Brazil. This is going to be such an interesting game. I'm glad the NFL is really trying to expand to other countries, but it always sucks to have to waste a home game not at your own stadium. That's really all I have to say for this video. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point, and if you enjoyed and haven't yet, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly does mean the world. Let me know how you are feeling about this team as we approach week one, and let me know what you would like to see next. And until then, I will see you all later.